listening to the Metal Command Podcast. Welcome back, everybody. Tony here from the Metal Command Podcast. And today I'm bringing you an interview with Crimson Glory guitar player Ben Jackson, who, of course, is an original member of the band, and their brand new singer, Travis Wills. And I really wanted to bring this interview out for everybody because, number one, I wanted everybody to get an idea of who Travis Wills is. I think he's a great singer. And, of course, bring on Ben Jackson from the band to not only talk about the upcoming album and the future of the band, but also for people to get to know Travis uh, because a lot of people really don't know much about him. Uh, other than, you know, they may have followed him in his band, Infidel Rising, and that he is the new singer in Crimson Glory. And obviously, he is on the new single, Triskaidecka, which is out on YouTube as of right now, and that I will link in the YouTube show notes. So with that being said, here is the interview with guitar player of Crimson Glory, Ben Jackson, and of course, their brand new singer, Travis Wills. Ben and Travis, welcome to the Metal Command Show. Uh, really excited for the next Crimson Glory album, the new song, very, very good. And um, really excited to have this. So why don't you give us some details on the album and maybe talk a little bit about um, when this album is going to come out and you know what it sounds like, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I um, guess I'll start. So the album's coming along really well. Yeah, we have about half the songs written and a few more in the works. So we, we have a, a bunch of material working on. Definitely mm -hmm. enough album. Um, and uh, we're all excited as it's going very well. So I would think maybe a release time for this might be, you know, fall of next year or this year, or, you know, hopefully. We'll see how that goes kind of a little goal we're set, setting for ourselves. Awesome. And, um, you know, how would you so compare it? To, you know, how would you compare it to it. some of the other stuff that you've come out with? Um, you know, obviously the last album was Astronomica. You know, the song is obviously a lot different. And I think it's more closer to the first couple of albums. And, um, you know, how would you say this album compares to, say, you know, some of the past releases you've put out? Um, well, we're, we're trying to go back more towards the roots of the band, like the sound and style of the first two albums. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a, a conscious move, you know, that that's what we're going for. The third and fourth album uh, were a little different in style. And, and uh, it just seems that the fans have always really embraced and loved the first two albums the most. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try to recapture that sort of vibe and sound for this new album. Sure. Travis, mm -hmm. I have to ask, so I have to ask you, so I posted about this, that I was really excited for the next record to come out, and obviously, and Ben, you could chime in on this too, obviously Midnight was a very highly regarded singer, so now you step in to, you know, obviously record a new album, and when I announced this, and obviously, you know, John wasn't going to be a part of the band, and obviously Midnight's not with us anymore, uh, some people were ready to write you off before the album even like a song even came out and you know i, I have you fought a lot of criticism when it comes to this or you know maybe it was when i posted it i just happened to have kind of an isolated incident you know on, on my page i'm sure you saw some of the comments and i kind of clapped back at people saying you know you guys haven't even you know you haven't even heard the album you know and i think when the song came out the the, the reaction was a lot more positive after that yeah um at first uh you know i was a little i was a little nervous when i i was reading the comments but then i i was like you know it, it is what it is i'm just gonna go out there do my best and um you know let the tips fall where they fall i mean the guys obviously like what i've been doing with the songs and mm -hmm. and um you know that's that's really important of course you know it's really important that the that the fans of the band you know dig it and i'm really glad that they got a, a little glimpse of what my voice kind of steers toward that um that they can get on board with that uh i've seen some real interesting things uh comparisons and i'm while i don't hear it uh, i'm glad to to read it so sure. um 
that makes me happy. Especially the World Dane one. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't hear it, but I'll take that. Mm -hmm. You know. And uh, of course, the uh, the kind of midnight overtone. I'm very glad to do that because, man, I tell you what, I was really scared going. Oh, not scared, but just nervous going into it uh, because sure. I mean, and you're stepping into a legendary vocalist, mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, weight that is on your shoulders and. And uh, I had to think about it if if this is something that I feel like I could do, and um, I thought about it, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I can do this, and I'm I'm glad that that these guys trust me to to bring that to the band. Sure. Yeah, I think you did a good job on the song. That's just me. Uh, I you know I always reserve the judgment based on what i hear you know i don't look at it and say okay this guy isn't here or that guy isn't here i always say let me hear what the music sounds like first and then i'll make a judgment on it and that's kind of where i went but it's interesting because the narrative before the song came out i mean i know you were able to buy it on the website but before the song came out there were a lot of naysayers but when it did come out the the reaction was a lot more positive i don't know if you noticed that but i know when i posted about it that and i talked about it the reaction was a lot more positive than say it was when it was first announced and i think that personally i think singles are usually you know usually the shorter song on the track it's a little bit more straight to the point i have this gut feeling that the album's going to be a lot better that's just my opinion um you know i really i really like the the single uh that came out um I've I've heard that a lot, like that that singles are usually the less the, the more less desirable songs. But I think uh, the stuff that we've got for the new album is just stellar, and fans are going to be really pleased. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of hat tipping to Midnight in it, and um, there's a lot of revisiting the 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 sound from the first two albums. So I think everybody's going to be really pleased. Yeah. absolutely yeah i agree yeah the so ben obviously the band had a little thing going with todd from queensrike for a little while then obviously you know you guys had parted ways i know there was a demo that had to come out and then the band kind of went on you know hiatus again and you know wh what was it you know why was there such a long wait and what actually brought everything back together again well, you know, around the time that Todd was in the band for a couple of years, we were working on some some material for a new album, and and um, you know, I think I've told the story before, and I even think Todd has told it. You know, that one member, particularly John, was just kind of not really showing up to a lot of the scheduled nights that we were supposed to get together and write. Yeah, and some well, some nights he'd come late, some nights he wouldn't come, and Todd just kind of got a little tired of it that it didn't seem like he was putting his his all or his heart into it um after you know we all agreed we were going to make a new album and for whatever personal reasons john had going on in his life he just wasn't really turning up and the rest of us were really on board and without his presence um you know todd just went ahead and put his full energy into queen's right sure um and we understand why and it's, he's, he's got a good thing going there absolutely so i mean john sort of retired from the band and from music all around about 12 years ago yeah so at this point you know we're just ready to pick up the pieces of the band and move on you know we don't have to close down the, the, the ship on this thing just because one guy decided he didn't want to do music anymore he's, he's kind of focused on his family and other things and Obviously, Midnight's not with us anymore, and we all miss him, and always will. And and John is basically retired. It was his own decision, and and uh, sure. I don't think you're going to see him, you know, get getting involved in music anytime again soon. He seems to have a lot of other things going on in his world, and um, you know, we have three original members: Jeff Lords, Dana Burnell, and I. We have John Zonder on keyboards, 
who uh, played on the Transcendence album. He, he used to tour with us back in the old days in the 80s and all the tours with Todd Latore. So John Zahner, the keyboard player, he's played with Sabotage and and Circle to Circle. And he's a great keyboard player. And, and uh, he, he's been a part of Crimson Glory since way back then too. So we're really looking at like, we have four guys here from the, from the original band formula. Sure. And uh, we got a, we got a great new guitar player and we, and we got a, a great new singer in Travis. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're very capable of making a really good record that sounds like real old, old school Crimson Glory. Absolutely. And, and, you know, let's, let's talk about your new guitar player, Mark Borgmeyer. Um, I don't know much of him, but maybe talk about getting him into the band and what was it about him that made you guys think, you know, we need to get this guy in this band. Well, you know, he's, he's a local guy that has been friends with the band for many years. Uh, you know, back when we toured Greece, I think the last time we went there with midnight, um, in 2006, you know, Mark was with us and working with us on, you know, guitar teching and all that. And, you know, he's a great guitar player. He really is. Everybody around our area really loves the guy as far as his personality and just his playing skills. Everybody looks up to him. And he's like one of the sharpest, hottest guitar players around our local area. And we just didn't really see any reason to search the world and maybe get some guy from another country just because maybe he played in a more well-known band or had a bit of a name. I mean, sure. we just thought Mark was the obvious choice. He's been such a long-time friend of the band. Um, he's played on a few solo album projects with me. Um, he's teamed up with Dana and Jeff before on, on studio singles and whatnot. So he's just been part of our, our organization in one way or another, sort of for a long time and and we sort of knew you know even say eight ten years ago that hey if we ever do bring the band back or resurrect the band you know mark's going to be the guitar player sure we, we just kind of knew yeah it, you and know sure. it's it's interesting too because it's i'm glad to see you have somebody that's not as well known because i use i sometimes get sick of the same guys getting recycled right you know, between the yeah. same one guy in like 25 different bands where you can have one guy that will focus completely on the band, just the one band that he's in, which I think makes the music, you know, turn out a lot better that way. Yeah, he's kind of a new face to the fans. You know, I don't know if a lot of people will really know of him. You know, he doesn't have a lot of records out or big history with well-known bands. Although he's played on a few of my solo records, he had a band years ago called Steel Angel, which was mm -hmm. a really cool album. They put they put out one album on a Greek label some years back, and um, the band was similar in style to Crimson, and um, the singer was really good. His name was Jason, and unfortunately, he died in a car accident years ago, which sort of put an end to that band. But, um, you know, Mark really fits into the style of what we play and what we're all about. And uh, just a super cool guy. So he, he brings that element to which is what we need. Sure. Ben, I do want to touch on something. You know, the first couple records, obviously, were so much different, in my opinion, than what was coming out at the time when they were released. And just to take a little trip back in time, uh, was it difficult? I, I mean, because... There were so many, you know, back then the scene was so much different and what you guys were doing was more on the progressive side and it wasn't the typical thing that was coming out at the time. And, and was that difficult to start off with those records? I mean, were they well received at first did, or, you know, did maybe years later do people like them better? You know, because I look at Transcendence and I look at the first album and I think to myself, man, you know, these guys, you guys were a lot different than what other people were doing, you know, you were doing different music than what other people were doing back then. Well, um, thanks for giving us that, you know, good word of being that we were so original. I mean, there, there were a few other bands out there at the time that were similar doing things, you know, progressive and metal like Queens Reich and Dream Theater, and Fates mm -hmm. Morning, and they were all around at that time too. But, but it's nice that people do sort of consider us as one of the pioneers of the style. For yeah. sure. I'll be honest, when we put out the first record even, 
uh, it was received very well. It got high reviews in all the magazines in Europe, like Hard Shock and Metal Hammer, and yeah, and uh, everybody loved the record right from the get go, and, and thought and saw that there was something very special in the band and, and Midnight. Um, you know, when we went on our first real tour of Europe, and we were opening for Anthrax for a few weeks. Uh, I think some of their fans were kind of looking at us like, wow, what are these guys all about? They're out there. We're wearing full face masks. <laughs> we're kind of theatrical. And, and a lot of their fans were like fans of thrash. Yeah. Uh, so, so I remember when we took the band on tour the first couple of times, people were kind of looking at us like, what are these guys? All, you know, what are they all about? Right. But, um, we had to win people over in the live sense. But as far as the records, it seemed like people really embraced them and, and loved them right from the get get go. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy to think, you know, when you think back at, at, at some of the record, the first two albums, just, I mean, they are still so highly regarded by so many people. And I think that's where a lot of people are judging, you know, this upcoming album on that, you know, I mean, that's, that's pretty much where it's at. And, and so you get these people that get stuck on those records and sometimes won't, give some of the newer stuff a chance i see this all the time and i'll be honest with you hearing the one song that you you've put out so far personally i and i truly 100 percent believe this i think this album is going to live up to the band's name in my opinion and would you describe this record probably more similar to you know, obviously similar to the first two albums but you know, is it any, is there any differences or is it pretty close to like transcendence or the first record? Well, I, I think it's pretty close. I think, you know, obviously we're, we're different now and, and we're evolving as, as a band should. And, and, um, you know, it might have a little more modernisms about it, you know, mm -hmm. it might sound a little modern. Uh, the right. production will probably be a little better and more modern than the productions on the first two albums because of you know things that you can do today in the recording world i think you know the first album when i listen to it it sounds thick and everything that the production's a little dated yeah you know but you know stylistically the way we're writing i think it's really right up the alley of what we were doing then and um you know and then obviously travis is going to bring something new to this because yeah. he's somebody He's a, he's a different guy. He's his own guy. You know, like he says he he sings on some of these songs where he does little things that sort of tip the hat to the midnight um, vibe. But but he's really an original. You know, and that's what we needed in a new singer. We didn't want a midnight clone. We wanted somebody who was special, a yeah. real original. You know, we have that. Travis is very special, very original. Yeah. And Travis, I know you're a drummer and I've heard the Infidel Rising stuff. And so when I heard you were in the, I, when I heard you were in Crimson Glory, I was kind of, I was kind of excited for that because I've already heard stuff that you've done. Right. And, um, you know, that, that was, I thought it was a great choice in my opinion to bring you in. And for whatever reason, it didn't surprise me <laughs> when I, when I found out about it, I remember Wayne posted about it, um, uh, that you were in the band and I got I'm, I'm excited for the record in all seriousness. And, you know, with that being said, uh, Travis, what was it like going in and writing music with these guys for you? Um, you obviously have the other band that the other band you have, but you have a whole completely different group of guys and, and you have a, a legendary band. So, uh, what was like the writing process for you? And, you know, how was it, was it a lot different than what you normally do or is it, is was it pretty much the same you approached everything the same way that you did say on the infidel rising stuff um no it's it's a little bit different um in infidel rising that's basically my band and um i i don't say i write everything in it but i, I write a a big majority of the stuff that's in the infidel rising stuff um or I suggest a bunch of things there. I write all the vocal melodies, most of the words. Sometimes Wayne will, will, will write words. Uh, I'll contribute like guitar parts or keyboard parts. But with uh, the Crimson Glory stuff, um, 
a lot of the stuff is uh, their 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 vocal ideas and their vocal melodies, their vocal words that are suggested to me, and I'll I'll uh, what I'll usually do is I'll sing it the way uh, these guys want me to to sing it, and then I'll I'll also send an alternate version saying I think while I think this is good, I think this I, I'm hearing something like this and what do you think and kind of put the back and forth so we can get the the best of because i don't want to just stomp all over somebody's you know idea i want to i want to be able to to uh kind of contribute to, we want to get the best uh we can out of um out of uh the music so um I'll I'll throw some stuff out there, and then we'll we'll just go back and forth until uh, we find uh, something that works for both of us and works best for the song. Absolutely. So, the new single that just came out, um, Triscuit Eka. Um, why was that picked as the single? And you know, essentially, what is the song about? Travis. Oh me? Oh, whoever, whoever wants to answer. <laughs> um, yeah, this it's the song is is about triskaidekaphobia, fear of the number thirteen, and basically, this song isn't specifically about thirteen. It's basically about just fear of superstition, of broken mirrors, and bad luck, and that whole thing. And that's basically what that song is about. Um, the lyrics were. Um, when I got that, the lyrics were already uh, written. Um, I contribute a, a, f a few words to it, and um, I changed up some of the melodies in it. But for the most part, there wasn't a. I didn't see any reason to change much of the song. I thought it. I thought it sounded great as it was. Sure. Um, but as far as the meaning, I think that's that's what that that song's about. I think it's Greek uh for the, the fear of the number 13 you know there's no 13 floors on the elevators mm -hmm. a lot of superstition that's what that song's about just superstitions yeah. absolutely absolutely and why was it the single what was it about that track that made you guys think hey let's release this out this song first well uh, i'll tell you because we we had recorded two songs as we were writing songs for a whole album. We had that one and another one, which were the first two that we really completed with, with Travis, you know, and had recorded and they were properly recorded, mixed, mastered. And we decided, you know, we have two songs to choose from. So of the two that we had done, we just chose that one. We thought it was a little, you know, kind of kicked a little harder in the beginning. The other one's really cool too, but it has kind of like a mellower intro, and then the song kicks in, uh, where Triska Decca kind of pounds you right off the bat, and we just thought that would be the better one for the first single. But I mean, it's not that it's better than another song or the rest. I think the rest of the songs are going to stand up well um, with a good bit of versatility on it too. I mean, the album will have its more dramatic songs or emotional songs, you know, like Crimson had with Painted Skies and songs like that. And sure. And it's going to have, have the heavier songs, you know, the more faster metal songs. So or it's it's not going to be like an album of 10 songs that all sound like the same. It, it's We have versati versatility going on in this record, kind of like Crimson did on the, on the early stuff as well. Yeah. Well, I always look at progressive so, yeah. bands like like um they're progressive they can do pretty much almost anything you <laughs> don't expect the unexpected it's kind of how i look at that yeah that one sound is song just like the other and then the other because there's going to be some different you know tricks and things in store on the record but it, it will have that signature sound of crimson throughout um sure. That's why we chose the song, just because we had two two ready to go, and that's the one we chose. We also made the decision that um, when we decided to release the news to the world that the band was returning and we had a new singer and we were doing a press release, we wanted to make sure we had a new song, a single to offer 
with that new news and said, well, I'm returning and here's a new single, here's some new music. So people weren't going, oh yeah, you know, we, we've heard before you guys were working on a new album and you sort of disappeared for a while. Are they really serious? So we want to let people know, yeah, we're very serious and here's a song, you know, something we're, we're giving you right here now, right? Right upon the day of the news that we're back, here's, here's some new music. Yep. So that's kind of a plan. And, and as of now, that song's still available on the website still, correct? Yeah. Awesome. And there's a lyric video, you know, there's a lyric video for the song on YouTube. Yep. And of course, anybody go watch and listen to that for free, you know, without ordering it. They just go check it out. Abs absolutely. And, um, you know, from what we've gotten almost nothing but really good positive comments on the song. I've only seen maybe one or two people say like, oh, uh, not sure, you know, what, what's it going to be like with John? John not around, but, you know, that's expected. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the band's got a lot of fans and, you know, like when Krista Garmo left Queensryche, I'm sure a handful of their fans were going, wow, what's it going to be like without him? But here they are all these years later, many kick-ass records later, and they're doing their thing. And, yeah, you know, sometimes you just got to gotta move on. You know, one of the things that's really exciting is, you know, this this single that we put out, we do, not all, only are we competing with, you know, stuff from the first and the second album, but we're also competing with, um, and that in itself is hard, it's hard to do, but you're also competing with nostalgia of that time, mm -hmm. that time period that, that people that feeling that they felt the first time they put in, you know, they heard Lady of Winter or uh, Queen of the Masquerade, um, you're competing with that feeling. And so far, you know, the reaction's been positive, and that's really exciting me because when you're competing with nostalgia, that is hard to to overcome. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I give cr these guys just absolute credit for really – writing the stuff they they wrote jeff lords jeff's a freaking writing machine and um and these guys are, are just they do just just doing such a fantastic job of 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 making that that combination of music for the fans from the first and second album it's and and also competing with the nostalgia factor i i i'm just so excited about it i'm really stoked yeah yeah. Competing, Same here, bro. Yeah, competing with nostalgia. It's interesting you you bring that up because I think that's one of the underlying problems that bands that have been around a long time face. You know, so I can tell you there are a lot of bands, in my opinion, that put out better stuff than say what they were doing, you know, 20, 25, 30 years ago. And, and people just typically will write it off really won't give it much of a chance because they're they're stuck on some album from you know 1986 or or, or whatever uh but it's interesting you bring that up because i also believe that the nostalgia thing really people get so stuck on that they don't notice any newer bands coming out either so it's kind of i get where you're coming from on the you know competing with nostalgia because not only especially you travis not only are you guys competing against you know people you know really loving those first two albums but travis you're being compared to a pretty legendary singer as well and you know that can carry a little bit of weight you know it's at a the lot time. of responsibility it is yeah i mean um that, i almost did not want to do it um and when i was approached but um like i said i, I decided to go ahead and do it and was excited yeah it's a, it, I mean, Midnight is just so unique and yeah. everybody knows it. That's the thing. Everybody already knows it. And so, yeah, it, it's a lot of responsibility. That guy is just, he's just on another level. And so having to be in those shoes um, is, it's, it's a lot of responsibility and it's an, an, an honor as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's you kind of get into that, 
situation. Then you start thinking about, man, now I know what like guys and bands, you know, like, like what, like Ripper Owens might've faced when he joined Judas Priest or, you know, Blaze Bailey joining Iron Maiden or some of these guys that replace legendary guys. I mean, you're to an extent you're experiencing that a little bit now because yeah. you have to deal with that. You have to deal. It's almost like it's a battle that you have to fight before any music gets released you know, just people automatically saying, oh, the, you know, I don't even want to check this out because there's no midnight. But yeah. as Ben as Ben brought up about, it's interesting, as Ben, as you brought up, as I said before, when the song was, when the news was posted, and then when the lyric video, the, when the lyric video came out, th the narrative completely changed. I'd say a very clear majority of people reacted very positively Whereas right before that came out, there was kind of a negative, you know, people were associating this, you know, band, the band getting back together is kind of a negative thing. But then the lyric video came out and it changed the tune of a lot of people. In fact, I remember people that had commented negatively messaging me saying, man, I'm, I, I really like this song. I'm really excited for the album now where I can go back in the comments and look and, and see where they were like not on board with it at first. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah, and I mean, you're still going to have the naysayers. It is what it is, but I would say when the song came out, it changed the narrative quite a bit with a, with a lot of people, you know. So, um, I will. Um, you have another single coming out at some point, I'm assuming. And do you have any shows planned? Um. Yeah, we, we're already booked for the Keep It True Rising Festival in Germany on October 5th of this year okay um next day october 6th we're playing Prague power europe in the netherlands um uh, march of 25 we're going over to do up the hammers festival in athens greece uh another show in thessaloniki greece a show in cyprus a couple shows in sweden and, and then in april we go back to do the epic fest in denmark yeah so we have a, a bunch of nice festivals already on on the on the books for this year next year that is actually really great to hear travis i gotta ask you this if you had to pick the hardest song to sing from the back catalog you know what would it be have you tried have you started practicing and rehearsing for i know you don't have shows for a long time but are there any songs that you've tried to sing you know that you may what's the what's the one that's the most difficult for you um Hmm. Most of <laughs> What'd you say? By your cat walk by. Oh yeah. Um. Hmm. Oh, they all have their challenges. Um. I, I don't know if there are any that's like harder than another. I I, I just say that they all have different challenges, and I have to be in the right i have to make sure i'm in the right placement in my voice in order to nail the note yeah not just nail it but make it sound good you yeah know? um and so i've been working real hard um on that actually my my vocal coach has been helping me a lot uh she's awesome and um she helps me keep the the placement where i need to be and seen a lot of improvement and because of seeing on this is so much different than it is in Infidel. Infidel yeah. is completely different. Uh, this is just a whole new level of and different way of singing I've never sang before. So uh, I had to take, I had to do a, a different approach to the way I executed my voice on these songs. And so, yeah, like I said, it's just, it's just, it just there's, there's different. It, they're just there's different um struggles in within each song yeah i know for me personally as a singer red sharks would probably be the one that would probably be the most difficult you know just listening to transcendence i mean that's the song that i i remember listening to that and like man i don't know if i could even i could, I couldn't even sing that high <laughs> you know, so, I mean, you'd have to really push yourself, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's challenging material 
for sure. You know, and I'll let you both chime in on this, um, Ben and and Travis. So I guess I'll ask Ben first, how did you find out about Travis and what were, what was it about his voice that really interested you in, in bringing him in? Uh, well, we found out about him because uh, Jeff was friends with him on Facebook. And, and after we had talked with a couple other singers in the early discussions about bringing the band back, things didn't really turn out to be like where we chose those guys. And we were still looking. And one day Jeff wrote to me and said, hey, I know this guy, Travis, lives in Texas. Think he might be a good guy to try. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. You know, let's check him out. And uh, Travis sent over a version of him singing Painted Skies, and we were pretty bowled over by it. We're like, wow, it sounds really good. Let's give him, you know, a couple, you know, maybe a verse or a chorus from one of these two new songs we've just recorded and see what he sounds like on something new, you know. And mm -hmm. he, he gave us a couple samples, and we're like, yeah, we're, you know, let's get this, let's take him, let's go. He's, he seems like a cool guy, and like he's got, he's got the stuff. Travis, what was that? What was it like for you going and recording, you know, some of those songs and kind of your mini audition to get into the band? Well, I'll be real honest with you. I did not think I was going to get the, this gig at all. Mm -hmm. And when, when Jeff approached me, I was like, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, sure. I'll, I'll give it a, I'll give it a shot. And I did, uh, painted skies and, um, and I sent it over and, uh, they liked it and I'm, I was really blown away. And I was like, Hmm. And I said, let me, let me, let me re-sing that song. So I re-sang that song and um, really put a whole, like everything I could into that song. And, um, and they really liked that. And uh, then I did, uh, I think I did like, ended up doing like eight more songs and sent that over. And uh, cause I was stoked. I couldn't believe they liked what they heard. <laughs> and, and then when they, when it came time to um, record on the, the the new song the new album i was really stoked um we had to make some adjustments uh to um because i i like i said i had to change my my style of singing um from infidel to sing um stuff with this band and i didn't you know i didn't want to be i, I still wanted to be myself and I didn't want to be a clone of, of, of Midnight. And so I wanted to find a way where I could make myself happy and make the fans happy. And so we went back and forth with how I should approach this vocally. And I think we found the right combination of, of what make, will make everybody happy. Sure. So when do you, plan, do you guys plan to have a new single out and do you have like a, a, a time frame of when the album might come out? Well, you know, we had another single that we wanted to put out like right month or so after the first one, kind of keep the, the excitement rolling. But, but now we're, we're in discussions for a record deal with a mm -hmm. label. Yeah. Um, we've sort of been advised now to hold off on releasing another single until we solidify this deal. Because a record label doesn't really want to sign a band if they're already putting out several singles from the album right. and stuff them on their own website. You know, they want it's okay that we got one out and we had we had another one that we, was ready to go, um, but right now we're we're trying to solidify a deal that we're putting together with a label and and um sure that the fact that we are probably going to be doing that soon is 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 getting our deals in order, then we may not actually release another single until the record comes out. I'm not sure. Um, maybe if the label agrees it's the thing to do to put another single out before the record, maybe yeah. we will. But, but I mean, as I said, hopefully we can expect the record sometime near the end of this year. Mm -hmm. um, if, it, if it's 
a little longer and maybe coming out right in the first couple of months of the, the, the next year, 25, maybe that'll be the way we go. I mean, we're not going to rush it and put it out until it's really, you know, perfect and really good and re ready to be unveiled. Yeah. And for people out there that don't know, I'll just say this record labels generally like to put out like two to, th you know, four singles before the album comes out to kind of really get the promotion up for it and everything. So, um, that's, a, that's, that's a very common thing, um, that, you know, so a lot of, cause a lot of people that if they're out there saying, why isn't another single coming out? I mean, there's also the business aspect of this folks. And, you know, that is essentially that's, that's the part of this that, uh, people, you know, sometimes don't understand, you know? So, I mean, I totally, well, I mean, you know, we could put it out right now, but we just feel like we, we want to be, you know, you know cooperative with the label and make sure that we're all on the same page and we don't want to put out a single another one on our own right now until maybe we get our deal in order with them and then if the decision is you know made we'll put out another one yeah yeah, yeah i mean and not only that i mean the, speaking of the business side of things it's like i mean we could finish the album in october but then you're looking at three four sometimes five months before the label has everything together before that album even gets they can mm -hmm. release it yeah there's a, the, there's, there's a long and you got to wait on vinyl you know there's a yep. long i don't i don't know not sure if people realize that you know the the waiting period also has a lot to do with the label and and, and the things that they go through that they have to meet the demands that they have to the criteria yep. that has to be checked off in order to release an album yeah physical merchandise i believe in most cases to get vinyl done and to get this physical product is usually eight to nine months. I mean, that's just, that's a very common cycle. And then, you know, for a lot of people that don't know how the promotional aspect of it works, typically during that time, they will, they will put out a couple single, they'll put out like one single and then closer to the release date, they'll put out a couple more. Then the album will come out. Then they'll do another maybe lyric video or two to promote a tour or whatnot. Um, so there's a long waiting period. I mean, people, you know, unfortunately patience is patience is a, a virtue in this case because, you know, every one of these factories that produces this stuff is essentially filled to capacity, you know, for the most part, because the demand of all this stuff has gone up. So, so just so people don't get like mad or wonder why you guys aren't putting an album, uh, another single out, this is, this is why, you know, and, and I totally get it. It's a business thing. Yeah. Well, you know, I think realistically we'll probably have the, the record coming out maybe in the first quarter of next year, you know, of 25. Mm -hmm. That's, of course, what everybody's asking as soon as we announce we're back and put the single out. Everybody's first question is, when is the record coming out? When is the record coming out? Yeah. Just, you know, bear with us, be a little patient. Um, it's well underway and it's definitely mm -hmm. happening. It's not going to be like a prolonged two, three year thing. I mean, you know, within a year of now, the record will be out. It'll be in people's hands. But, you know, we have a single out. We already we already have scheduled appearances at several nice festivals. So, you know, we're back and it's 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 totally on. You're going to play any of the new uh, a lot of the new material at the festivals, like, you know, not just a single, but maybe another song. Yeah, two, maybe three songs. Okay. From the album at the festival, the first, the first one. Awesome. Well, gentlemen, I really appreciate your time and appreciate you guys coming on. Um, I'll be honest with you, uh, I'm really excited for the album. You know, the more I, I, the more I listen to this interview now, I'm like even more excited about it. So, um, any last words for any of the fans that are checking this out? Well, um, just know that, you know, we're, we're happy the fans have stuck with us in all these years and they have so much high regard for the, the early records and we're just glad to be back. We want to give them something they're really going to enjoy. All right. Well, 
ladies and gentlemen, Crimson Glory, Travis Wills, and of course, uh, Ben Jackson from uh, the band. And uh, really excited for the record. And, and thanks for coming on. Always. Absolutely. Absolutely.